Andrea, thanks so much for taking time to meet with me today at Interact 2016 and talking a little bit more about your program. Can you tell us a little bit more about Maryland Excels? A little bit of the background. Yes, Maryland Excels. It actually started the the seeds of it started in um, I think 2000 even with a very very small pilot program system, and then um, in 2012 they started growing a little bit more and started with some early standards in the the different domains for the Maryland Excels, and then with the race to the top funding that started in um, 2000. 12, 2013, that's where we are now with the full-fledged Maryland Excels quality rating system. Um, we have about close to 5,000 participating programs wow. from family child care, private child care, and Head Start and uh, public pre-K classrooms that are inside elementary schools that have special grantee funding. Okay. So it's open to any, it's a voluntary program, open to any licensed child care and school age, after care, before care program throughout the state of Maryland. Um, and there's five levels and one through five. The just recently as of July of 2015, if a child care program was accepting subsidy vouchers, they had to be participating in Maryland Excels. And then at levels three, four, and five, there's tiered reimbursement. So their reimbursement rate on those vouchers goes up as they go up the quality levels. So where does class fit in to this Maryland Excels program? Class fits in as part of the observation system. At level three, programs do a self-assessment using the ERS tool and or if they're Head Start and they're familiar with it, they could do the class at the level three for their self-assessment and they upload that to their profile on the Excels website. And then from that, they put together a program improvement plan for any domains that score below different cut levels for each of the different um, levels three, four, and five. And then at level four, if a program wants to move from level three to level four, they send me a request form and I send out an assessor to do their observation. And again, the scores for the observation do not change their quality level, but they use that information from the summary report for their program improvement plan. For the level five programs, a program is level five once it's been accredited by either Maryland State has its own accreditation or NACI or about a dozen other accrediting bodies. So at the level five, I keep track of those because once every three years, I send out an assessor to do their observations. And we do the class observation in any Head Start program or any of the public pre-K funded classrooms that could be inside the public school or inside a private child care provider. If they have the public pre-K grant funding, we use the class in those classrooms and we use the ERS in the other age groups of the other classrooms. So right now we're just using pre-K class. So why are you using class for program improvement? We use the class as one of the domains for the program improvement plan. On the program improvement plan, which is totally an internal document for the child care provider to create, they have to address, there are two things that they have to address. They have to address the school readiness um, standards for their county and choose one goal. They're supposed to write a SMART goal to improve one of the components of the school readiness report that impacts the children in their county. They also have to put in something in their program improvement plan related to any domain or ERS subscale that scored below a certain level. Usually it's 5.0, 4.5, depending on their level. The other parts of their program improvement plan are their choice, but it could be around staff credentialing, family engagement activities, or making improvements to the playground. So it's, again, it's the program improvement plan is what we try to get them to focus on and not the numbers and not scores because the whole mission of the Maryland Excels is the continuous quality improvement of the child care that's offered. So this is a pretty, fairly new, program that you have in place with yeah. class. What are the challenges that you've faced? 
Well, I've only, the, the Maryland Excels in this incarnation is just getting up to its third year, mm -hmm. and we're actually in the process of a validation study, an internal study, to see what changes we can make going forward once the Race to the Top granting is, is finished. So as far as class is concerned, with the Head Start programs, they know all about class, and we haven't really, the only struggle we had with that is an interesting case of an early Head Start program. And luckily, I'm actually trained in the toddler class, and it's just kind of where, and they're also in the Eastern Shore part of the state. I live in Baltimore, which is central, and then this program happens to be over the bridge, over the Chesapeake Bay, so it's like you got, you're over the bridge, you're central, and you're western mountains. So they're over the bridge, which would be a challenge, but I'm actually going to a statewide early childhood conference in Ocean City, so I'm planning to do their toddler class because my supervisor's like, well, if they're Head Start, we have to use class. I'm like, right, but it's not the right age group. And I said, so we could do itters. And she's like, yes, but if it's Head Start, we're supposed to use class because she's she knows everything and she knows the rules. And I, I'm new enough that I can like bend the rules and, and plead ignorance. I don't know how long I'll be able to get away. You can edit this part out. I don't know how long I'll be able to get away with that, but I, I'm still new enough that I can ask the pointed questions. So I said, well, let me ask the program what they would prefer. And I called the director and I said, well, your head start, so that's class. I said, but is your staff more familiar with itters? What would work best in your program improvement plan? And she actually, I don't know if she's certified, I don't think she's certified, but she actually is also using the toddler class. And I said, okay, let me make sure I can do a sleepover on my way to the conference in the <laughs> Ocean City. And it's all working out, so I'm going to stop by their program and do the toddler class and then continue on my way to the conference in Ocean City. So that kind of worked out. And again, it's about what is most valuable for the program and their program improvement plan. And if she requests toddler class, then we can make it work. How do you envision class evolving in the future at Maryland Excels? Well, we have some ideas of possibly uh, spreading or me doing the affiliate training of the toddler class mm -hmm. to see if the toddler class is going to be spread through more of the Head Start and the early Head Start. Um, personally, I would love for there to be the My Teaching Partner and what have you, the, the professional development side of the class but that's outside of the purview of the Excel's funding. That would be up to each early, um, each education, local education agency and or school board to decide if they wanted to do the professional development and pay into that for their public pre-K teachers and classrooms. So that's the politics and that's the funding, but that would be I think that's the best part of the whole Teach Stone world is all of the, the training and professional development that's available. Um, and what are you learning at Interact that you're going to take back with you to Maryland? I'm learning what other states are doing so that, again, we're in the midst of our validation study, so I'm hoping once we get the results of the validation study, then we open it up to our internal discussion of what improvements we can make. And I can come to those meetings and say, well, in this state, they're doing it this way, and in this state, they're doing it this way, as opposed to just saying I had these ideas and if it's just me and I came to Maryland from Florida from Broward County and one of my colleagues was like you have to stop saying we used to do it this way in Florida <laughs> just just to, you could still have your good ideas but just take that little phrase out of it so it's putting all these ideas and all the things on my wish list of where I would want to see my little portion of Maryland Excels growing and expanding into and hoping that once we're digesting the validation study that that's the place to make the improvements and try out some new tweaks. So we'll hear more at Interact 2017, right? Exactly, the <laughs> results of our validation study and what new challenges we're facing. Well, thank you so much for taking time to meet with me today. My pleasure, thank you.